Dear friends, during winter cleaning I have found these old SD cards. Unfortunately my computer doesn't have a card reader. Even I have some outdated Windows machine lying somewhere around, sticking SD cards of unknown origin to a PC asks for troubles. So I took my soldering iron and made this nice small adapter that fits nicely to my LA104. After running SD card browser application from the user interface, software automatically recognizes the card and installed file system. This one is from Raspberry Pi with some Linux partition. Let's try another one. Good, just one FAT32 partition taking full capacity. Now we can browse all files there. Looks like owner of this card had specific taste for music. Emily, Down to be Dumb, Gladiator, Polemic, all the best Slovak bands. Look, it can also show JPEG files. From the timestamps it seems like this card is more than 10 years old. What about playing videos on LA104? Clearly STM32 is not powerful enough to decode modern video formats, but we can stream RAW buffer from SD card into the LCD display. Achieving 11 FPS doesn't look much, but reaching 1.4 MB per second is very decent result for SPI3 on STM32 F103. The high-speed interface SPI1 is used for internal communication with FPGA chip and for external connection we have to stick to SPI3, providing just quarter of the speed as the first interface. Motivation for this project was to learn how file systems work on SD cards and to see what is the maximum SPI transmission speed on LA104. Most of the code was written from a scratch and no libraries were used. This application accesses the card in read-only mode and doesn't write any metadata to it. This means that it can be used for forensic analysis, verbose transmission error messages help to identify if the card is damaged, and file system browser can be used for checking if the card has any auto-run program, which is a sign of virus infection. And what about playing MP3s? Yes, definitely possible, but the sound quality is terribly bad. What you hear right now is generated at speed 4 kHz with 5 bits per sample. Sounds worse than first Edison's recording. Now I will show you how to turn any YouTube video into a format which LA104 can display. Just find the video you like, you don't need 60fps UHD, the second one should be sufficient. Just copy the URL, link and pass it to the script I prepared. Don't forget the quotes. YouTube DL is a utility which can download any video from YouTube or other streaming website. Dash all says to save the video as bigbugbunny.mp4. Next command is ffmpeg, popular open source video and audio converter. We take the video file we just downloaded and apply following filter. Scale it to 320 by 208 pixels, preserve the aspect ratio and if it cannot scale it to the size, just make one of the dimensions larger. Then make sure that the final size is exactly the size we need. Rotate it by 90 degrees and set the format to 16 bits per pixel big NDN. I set the frame rate to 7 which was the playback speed I achieved with the early version of the player. But then with some clever tricks I was able to significantly improve the reading speed which was the major bottleneck. At first YouTube DL downloads the video part of the movie, then the audio part and finally it merges both parts together. Incredible that you made it till end of this video and as a reward I have a surprise for you. One of the applications I have shown previously was fake. Yes, that's true, it was fake. It might be the SD browser, JPEG decoder, video player or mp3 player. Can you guess which one was that? Ok, now ffmpeg is converting our video. It shouldn't take much time and after running our script we will have two new files here. This one is the raw stream we wanted, while this one on the top is a regular mp4 file you can play in your favorite video player. Pretty cool, so now you will know how to download complete video from YouTube without any annoying ads. And that's all. Thank you for watching.